Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we've got to start off with a little story that will tie all of this behind me and more in. So definitely do not skip this video if you wanna learn how to, or any part of this video, if you wanna learn how to figure out your voltage drop. Okay, now let's start out with a story. So a while ago, um, probably close to 10 years or so, I wired a, um, for us on a side job with a contractor, I wired a, a gazebo. Now this gazebo only needed 30 amps down the way, and it was 155 feet from the panel to where it was gonna be at, out in a big open field. And what they wanted, they wanted to have 30 amps solidly down there. Uh, they wanted to be able to park a camper for the 30 amp and or run the lights and they had a little pond down there with a little um, fountain in it. So they wanted to make sure they had full power. Well, so the first thing I did is I went to the code book and I looked and I saw that 30 amps is good for 10 gauge wire. But, you know, I always say rule of thumb, anything past about 60 feet-ish or more, probably 65, you need to start really thinking about a voltage drop because there is a voltage drop. Uh, if you don't think about that and you, I was to pull a 10 gauge wire, 155 feet, 240 volt, I would have lost quite a bit of, of, of power going down there. Uh, the camper, it probably would have ran of course, but you know, when you want 30 amps, when you, that air conditioner kicks on, you're going to want that voltage. So having said that, uh, I had to figure out what size wire I needed, how to get it there, what size pipe I needed yada 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 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys how i figured out how to get the correct voltage from the panel to the gazebo and we're going to use this whiteboard i know it's a little one but as i get more videos like this i'll have a bigger whiteboard so and i won't have these jack leg uh, screws in it so anyway let's jump right in here and let's talk about this so we do know first of all we got to figure out how you can, what's the allowable voltage drop in percentage, right? So that's 3%, all right? Right here, 3%. So I went ahead and did the math for you. So at 120 volts, you can lose 3.6 volts and be okay. 208, 6.2, 240, 7.2, and 277, 8.31. You can figure any, whatever voltage you have, all you have to do is times it by 3% or it's times 0 0.03 and you can figure out all these numbers. All these numbers will, will add up to that if you were to do that formula. Now, we do know for a fact <clears throat> that what I told you was this, right? So we had a length of 155 foot. So that's from the panel to the gazebo was 155 feet, all right? They, they needed, they only, they only really needed 120 down there, but we pulled 240 for obvious reasons. So we're gonna do this as 240 volt down there, all right? Also, we do know that we needed a full 30 amps. All right, so there's a formula that we're gonna use, all right? And that is 2K, I L. All right, so this formula is what you will use over this, all right? And you'll divide that by voltage drop, and that will equal your circular mills. Now, all this may look foreign to you, or maybe you've heard of this, or at least the circular mills. I know you just heard of voltage drop because I just told you. So I'm gonna tell you what each one of these means in pretty good detail, so this may be a lengthy video. I will try to put timestamps, but I don't think that you should skip. If it was me, I wouldn't, if you really wanna know how to do this. All right, so we do know that the length is 155. The voltage is 240 volts, what we need down there. Really, for a camper at 30, all you need is 120 volts. But for the sake of this video, it's 240 volts. All right. And we know we need 30 amps. So how are we going to do that? Let's dissect what each one of these things mean. All right, so the two, all right, equals K equals I equals and L equals. All right, so L would mean length, right? I is your amps. K 
is your constant. Now, what does that mean? Hold still. And two is just two. All right, so that's pretty easy, right? So we do know what the length is. I told you what that is, 155. The amps are 30. The constant, now what does that mean? All right, so for aluminum and for copper, they have a value. Everything in electrical is severely thought out for safety and other one. So what is the constant of these two, all right? So copper is 12.9 and aluminum is 21.2. Now why are those important? Because if you are pulling aluminum, you need to make sure that this constant is at 21.2. Now all this will tie together, so hold still. And copper is 12.9. All right, so K equals K equals, all right? So now we have somewhat of a formula, and I wish I had a little bigger whiteboard. See, I need to get one, right? All right, so we do know that two, um, and if you know anything about um, algebra, and if you don't, well, you're gonna get a pretty easy algebra lesson right here. All right, so if you look at this formula right here, everything in here is times, 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 all right, so two, we know that's two, so now we're gonna do the K. K is constant, so we know that we're gonna be pulling copper, correct? So we need, we need to put 12.9, all right, so we'll put a times in there. So two, K, copper, 12.9, all right, what's the, what's the next one? I, amps, we know that we need 30 amps, okay? And the length is L times 155, all right? And we are going to divide that by the voltage drop. Now, I told you at the beginning, this is a 240 volt circuit. So we need to look here. So we have 7.2, okay? And we're gonna equals. This equals will be the circular mills. So if you know from algebra, you know that everything on the top is multiplication, right? You do the multiplication first. So we're gonna times all this together, all right? And what we're gonna come up with is, all right, so this will be our, our answer right here. All right, so what we have to do at this point is take this number divided by 7.2, and we are gonna get a whopping huge number of 1,000. All right, we're gonna get a whopping number of 16,662 Point five. Now that number is circular mills. Okay, so now we have to go to chapter nine, table eight in our code book. All right, so I'm not gonna tell you for sure if, if your ugly's book is the same as mine. I'm using the 2011 edition. You can look in chapter nine, table eight. That is where the circular mills and all that is, okay? That will tell you what you need to know. It's also in my ugly's book, 2011, on page number 71. Okay, so now we know that this is the number I have to work with, all right? So I can just bump that up to three if I wanted to. What we'll have to do is we'll have to look in the area of circle, circular mills. Now that's also in your code book and it's under area, all right? Same thing as in here. So we know that ours is 16,662. So we'll come down here to 16,662, which is, it jumps from uh, 1,000, or it jumps from 16,510 to 25,240. All right, so that right there tells you that the number eight, which is the 16,510, and the number six, which is 25,240, that's what you have to go with. So now, what does that tell you? All right, tells you this right here. This equals a number six right here. That's what I have to go. So now if you look, you know for a fact that number six is not for 30 amps. Now obviously it'll hold 30 amps, no problem, because it's way bigger. But I wanted to start out with a 10 gauge wire, but I couldn't because of the simple fact to get exactly what I needed at 30 amps, I needed to have a six gauge wire. So you have to bump it up like that to get what you need. Nothing, guys, is worse 
<laughs> than thinking that, oh, I'm just going to go to the book and look and see, oh, all I need is 30 amps, I'll just pull number 10s down there. You pull it that distance and you start running things and it's not running right. That's not a good, good look. Not on you <laughs> as an electrician, not on your name. You know, I mean, you've got to get this right. Okay, this is very, very, very important that you learn because if, if you just start pulling stuff, guys, you know, chances are you're going to really screw some stuff up and that's not going to be good. Uh, you know, so this is the easiest route to go. I mean, this right here tells you everything that you guys need to know. That is how you find what size wire you need. Super, super easy, guys. Let's take this one step further. All right. We know that these numbers right here are what we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Turn the camera off. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to transfer these numbers up here a little bit. We're going to see exactly what the voltage drop, the correct voltage drop is on this, all right? Uh, we'll see if it's 7.2 or what it is. So remember this, if you need a screenshot or whatever, like I said, I'm going to erase some of this stuff. And when I come back with a clean board, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here's what I got now. I erased all the other crap right here in the middle. And now all I'll do is transfer this up to here. Now, we're still going to use the 2KIL and now we change this right here because this used to say voltage drop right here. Now it says circular mills. So I put the line over, that means division, circular mills. So if you look here, these numbers are exactly what these numbers are, right? Correct? Okay. So also, and then circular mills is right here, and that is right here. So I just transfer everything up. We don't know the voltage drop, so we're going to figure this out. So all we have to do is multiply all this, which equals, so now we have 1, 1, 9, 970 divided by, all right, we have the 16662.50, which equals the voltage drop. All right, so we'll get this number on the calculator. We'll divide it by this number right here, and that'll equal the voltage drop. So let's see what that is. Let me get my handy dandy calculator out here, and we'll see exactly what that is. All right, here we go. 1, 1. I don't know if y'all can see there or not, probably not, but 119970 divided by 16662.5 equals 7.2. See how that works? 7.2. So now we know that these numbers right here equals 7.2 voltage drop, which we know that we are 100% okay with. Now, technically, um, I will tell you this, because if you remember when I first said that this is the number for circular mills, if you remember I said that, and I said that it jumped up to 20, let's see, 20, I have to look and see to be exact, 26, 240, that's a big jump. So technically your voltage drop will be actually be less than that because the wire is obviously a little bit bigger, but this is how you figure it out. These guys are important. If you guys are wiring anything, especially campers, gazebos, whatever, sheds, uh, you know, uh, garages, heck for anything, this is how you do it. Super easy, extremely important for any electrician. Even if you're in a company and they're telling you, you need to pull this, blah, 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 and you're like, I don't know. Double check them because a lot of the, I'm not gonna say every company, but some companies, especially these, these mom and pop companies, you know, sometimes they'll look at this code book and they'll be like, oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we'll just pull number tens to it, or we'll go up one more size, we'll go to number eights. Well, that's obviously not right because that's not gonna work. I mean, you saw, right? You saw what I needed. Yeah, I needed a number six, and all I had was 30 amps out there. I had to bump up pretty heavy just to get what I needed to make sure that I didn't get a huge voltage drop, guys. Remember this. This is your this is your your formula here, okay? You need to keep that in mind. The only things you're really ever gonna switch is the voltage drop and the and the circular mills, all right? Remember, down in the description, guys, I will leave, I will leave the chapter nine, table eight. I'll leave um, the Ugly's book, at least in my version, I'll leave the page number, which is which is 71. I'll leave that there. Obviously, I just told you, but you know, it's easier to read it sometimes. Also, down I have an Amazon store. I have all these links to many different products that I have, that I've used, that I have used, that I do use, and I stand beside of them 
100%. So if you want to check that store out, order anything, have at it. The code book will be in there, obviously. Uh, Ugly's book and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is it, guys. I hope I taught you something. Um, what I plan on doing is doing more of these kinds of videos. I'd like to show you guys uh, how to like tie wires together on a fish tape, uh, pull them in, you know, and so stuff like that. Also, there's more videos similar to this that I want to do. You know, how many wires can you put in a conduit, so on and so forth. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions about this, guys, uh, just remember this right here is easy to find. Your allowable voltage drop with your percents, okay? All you have to do is literally put, if you're using 120 volts, 120 times 3% is 3.6. Really easy, guys. This is simple. Any voltage you have, 575 volt, uh, 460, 480, whatever. Uh, what else did I put up here? Uh, 115, which, you know, you don't really see that much anymore. Uh, usually it's 120. You see 208 quite a bit uh, with, you know, high leg and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm not going to get too far into that, but just remember this is all you need, guys. Super easy. I hope I helped you. If I did, please leave a like, subscribe. God bless, and we will see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.